Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, I just updated my Blender to 4.1 and um, I haven't made uh, too many Blender tutorials, but it's pretty ine inevitable that um, I need to, right? I need to start kind of diving more and more into it. So in this tutorial, let's go ahead and create this uh, fun animation of uh, a dancing character, right? So uh, to get started, uh, let's head over to uh, Mixamo and just grab the uh, character that we can use as well as a uh, motion capture dance file that we like, right? So let's go ahead and go there. All right, so here I am in uh, Mixamo.com and um, let's grab a character that doesn't have a lot of extra geo uh, pieces uh, so it doesn't interfere with our uh, kind of a furry uh, dance, right? So uh, let's grab something super simple and clean like this mannequin right here. I'm gonna click on this guy and do uh, use this character. Next, let's find an animation for him that we uh, that we like. I'm gonna go to find animations, and in here, uh, you know, we could type in something like dance, for example, and just see what we like. Uh, let's go with something as uh, basic as this chicken dance, and I think that's uh, pretty cool. And of course, you can use any one of these other dances uh, for our example. And uh, this animation, uh, let's see, it comes with 143 frames. We have an ability to uh, overdrive it, right? We can speed it up. It's currently set to 50. We can make it maybe uh, 60. Let's do like, so I'm gonna go to 55 actually. I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go with this 131 frame uh, animation. The uh, character arm space is fine. I'm not gonna trim it. I'm just gonna simply say download. When I say download, I'm gonna grab the FBX. Uh, let's switch this to 24 frames per second because we're just doing animation. We're not really, this is not really a, a game animation. So 24 frames is fine. And uh, we do want the skin, right? Because we want the uh, the joints and we want the actual mesh for this character. So let's go ahead and say download. All right, next I'm going to jump into Blender. And uh, in here for anyone who is a Maya user, right? Uh, one of the things you could do, and I've done this, uh, you know, initially as well when I first installed Blender and this was one of the you know maybe first few times you open it and you try to play around with it. One of the things you could do is you could go to edit uh, preferences and in here there's something called uh, key map and when you click on key map um, up here under Blender preferences there's something called uh, Blender or industry compatible. Now this is interesting right if you switch it to industry compatible and let's just um, see what that does, right? So it's going to behave a lot like Maya does. So if you hold on the old key and left click, you're gonna be able to, um, you know, spin around or orbit around. You'll be able to zoom out. And essentially um, everything that you know and use in Maya will be the same here. And which is great, right? It's gonna allow you to, uh, you know, you can click on an object, right click, all of that stuff. And that's really cool for exploring and playing the problem that I personally found, and I'm sure everyone uh, has found the same issue, is that if you attempt to find any training or tutorials on anything in Blender, most people, I would say 99%, would use the standard uh, buttons. So then when you're watching a tutorial, uh, none of it is gonna make any sense, right? Because we are using the uh, other controllers. So for that reason, I think it's best if you are gonna attempt to play and explore Maya, um, you don't really have a choice. I think it's best and most um, effective way is to actually use the, um, the Blender uh, key map uh, setup because then you'll be able to, in a matter of seconds, have access to, um, you know, tons and tons of training, right? So let's go ahead and leave it on Blender. And again, if anyone is super new, I'm just gonna assume that my uh, target audience uh, who is watching this channel, most of you guys are probably like me. I mean, I am assuming this, but uh, you know, if you're a ZBrush and uh, mostly Maya uh, users, this is gonna be you know pretty puzzling uh, opening up Blender for the first time. But um, I'm here to maybe make the process uh, you know a little fun and maybe uh, easy. Now I do want to point out that as I'm looking for uh, various uh, positions, I'm currently on the hunt for uh, for work. Um, every company that I contact, they're using both, right? They're using Maya and Blender. And most startups will actually focus mainly on Blender, just because again, it's free and it's very accessible. 
And uh, you know, the AAA companies and larger companies do have a specific production or pipeline in place already. And those guys will use uh, Maya, but they are also integrating Blender more and more into their pipelines as well. So it really depends what company you get into. But if you want to be a well-rounded artist um, in today, in today's day and age, you, you need both. You really do. You need to master, um, honestly, uh, you know, uh, Blender, Maya, uh, ZBrush, Substance Painter. I think you should be pretty proficient in all of those, or at least have some basic understanding so you can sit next to an artist, you know, in a uh, work environment, even if it's remote, and at least be able to communicate or speak the same language. So for that reason, I'm going to start making more and more um, Blender tutorials as well. All right, so again, uh, let's go over the basics. If you uh, middle mouse click on your mouse, that's going to be able to give you the, um, you know, the orbit, right? You can orbit around. If you want to pan something, if you want to pan around, you just hold down the shift key and then middle uh, click on your mouse. And that's going to be able to give you a pen and uh, the panning. If you uh, do the wheel, that's going to be your zoom. All right, so now at, lo at least we know the very, very basics of navigation. Um, let's go ahead and import our character from Mixamo. So I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go Import, and uh, it's going to be an FBX. So find your um, Chicken Dance FBX or whatever dance you uh, are using and import your character, right? Now, uh, this is interesting, right? So when you import the character uh, from Mixamo, you can see the default um, Blender cube is much, much larger in comparison to the character. So for that reason, let's make our character uh, larger, right? So it fits kind of the scale, the environment of, uh, of Blender scene, right? So uh, to delete something, just select it and press X and then just delete it, right? And now to scale it, let's go ahead and select our joint there and press S on our keyboard and start scaling it. And uh, I'm gonna scale it to, you can see on the right of my screen, there's the scale X, Y, and Z values. I'm gonna scale it to, uh, point, uh, let's see, 03. I think that's pretty good. And I'm gonna click to kind of commit to my new scale. All right, so now uh, once you've done that, you can also, uh, of course, let's go ahead and close this. Um, what you can do now is let's play our animation. So if you wanted to see the actual keyframes, you just have to select your uh, baked uh, joints, right? So that's gonna have the actual keyframes. And we can see right here that the animation ends if you drag this, you can see the whole animation, but you can see that the animation actually ends on the frame 106. So at 107 and on, it's blank, right? But our timeline is set to 250 by default. So we don't really need that, right? So let's adjust this to 106 as well. Press enter. Using the uh, mouse wheel, you can, um, you know, zoom in and then holding down the shift and middle mouse button, you can pan, um, get it kind of uh, positioned the way you like it. You can also uh, obviously press play, and then that's gonna give you a loop of your um, of our animation, right? So that's cool. And uh, let's uh, let's move on. So now, since we have all of this set up, um, what do we do next? Let's go ahead and apply some uh, fur, right, to this character, so he can, uh, you know, get a little more interesting. So how do we apply some fur? Well, if we click on our uh, character, the mesh, right. Um, and go to our materials, we can see that uh, the mesh from Mixamo actually came with a material which we don't probably want. So let's go ahead and delete that by clicking on the minus. And that should delete the material and now you can see that it actually changed the viewport. All right, so to actually apply the fur, uh, again, select your mesh, right? Select your mesh and then go to this little button right here called, called particles. So if I click on that, you will see uh, this kind of a blank uh, box, right? Let's go ahead and click on plus. And when we say uh, plus, it's gonna add a new particle system uh, to the scene. And uh, we don't want these uh, bubbles. Let's go, go ahead and select hair instead. And if you don't see the hair on your screen, make sure that in the source, find something called use modifier stack. So if you cl click on that, um, you know, I'm not really sure everyone has different computers, but sometimes you do need to check this to see the actual hair preview. 
the hair uh, is currently way too long, right? So let's go ahead and drag this uh, hair length down. So instead of the value of four, let's maybe go go to point, uh, you know, point three. Let's try that, and you can see now uh, you should see sort of a short hair representation, almost like a think of like a yeti, right? You have uh, you can decide what length you want. So currently you can see that the hair is kind of uh, really straight, right? Almost like a porcupine. But if we wanted to create some uh, movement to, uh, during the animation, right? We want to add additional kind of a subdivision to these uh, particles. So to do that, you want to go to render. And in here, there's something called B spline. If you turn that on, uh, the steps are currently set to three. And essentially what that is doing is it's creating three different segments for each one of these uh, little hair pieces. So then they'll be able to bend during the animation. Next, let's go to uh, children and let's click on interpolate it. Now, what that's going to do is you can see that the volume or the quantity of the uh, particles have increased dramatically, uh, essentially times 10. And you can see that it says display amount and render amount. So if we render this out into, uh, you know, into an actual animation sequence, um, that's going to be times 100. But in the preview, uh, it's just giving us 10 to make sure that our computer is uh, staying nice and efficient. All right, so if we uh, leave everything as is and just go to uh, frame one and press play, you can see what that looks like. We have our animation and we have this kind of a porcupine uh, effect where the character is dancing, but none of the actual um, strands or particle hairs or furs, right, are moving around. Now for, uh, for them to move around, you uh, obviously need to add some physics, right? So currently this is all visual. Now let's add some uh, physics and some, you know, some gravity, right? How do we do that? So to do that, my character is still selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, come up here and let's turn on something called hair dynamics. So now by just simply clicking this and you can open this up, you can see the quality steps uh, is currently set to five. If you guys have one of those super fast, uh, you know, expensive computers, you can bump this up. But if you leave it on, on five by default and go back to one and press play, you can see that now the hair is actually uh, moving around with some sort of uh, physics, right? So it's a lot more uh, interesting. Again, I'm thinking of like a crazy Yeti character, right? And the cool thing is um, the cache will kick in once you uh, play it once and you can see it's much, much better. And Blender 4.1 uh, is pretty awesome at this at this point. All right, very cool. Uh, let's keep going. Now you can see that the hair is currently uh, also very separated. What if you want to clump it up a little? If you wanted to clump it up, there is an actual clumping setting, which is kind of funny, but under children, um, you have something called clumping. If you open that up, uh, it's currently set to zero by default. But if we uh, move this around, you can see what it's doing, right? It's kind of bunching up and um, kind of, you know, clumping together, right? So. Let me go to like 0.7 and let's press play again. And you can see how it's just a little bit different, right? Um, I think it's a little more natural maybe. And uh, it's kind of cool how on frame one, he kind of goes to like full out and then it kind of kicks in. So I think that uh, that's perfect. Now the only, uh, the other thing that you might notice is that the hair is kind of going through the actual mesh. Um, is there a way to add some collision to our hair? And there is, right? Let's again select our mesh. Let's go to this little uh, physics section. And in here, let's just simply turn on collisions. And now if I go back to uh, one and press play, the hair is gonna be a lot slower, right? Let us let me uh, have the cash kind of kick in. But now you should see the hair bouncing off of the mesh instead of going through it or into it. So I think that's, uh, definitely going to help us uh, for sure. Now one of the uh, things that's kind of odd is maybe uh, having the hair on the actual feet and the hands, right? How do we uh, deselect the hair from the feet and the hands, right? So let's do that. So to do this, what we want to do is we want to uh, switch the mesh into the edit mode. And you can do that by um, pressing the tab key on your keyboard. When you press the tab key, it's going to go into the edit mode and you can see that up here. And uh, what you want to do next is let's just create a, uh, a group, right? Kind of a selection group telling uh, Blender that uh, we only want certain parts of the model 
to be uh, w with fur and then you know the rest of it is not so how do we create a selection group um, what you want to do is you want to go into uh, this little green icon and you want to add a plus and now you can see it says group so if we wanted to we could name this or we could leave it alone but essentially what we want to do is we want to create a selection right so let's click go into um, kind of an orthographic view like a flat view and let's create a selection of the hair right so I'm gonna go from the top and I'm not gonna include the uh, hands and I'm not gonna include the feet but I'm just gonna do something like this now all I need to do is just simply say assign and now I just assign all of these points that are being highlighted into a group right if you want to double check and make sure that actually worked well, uh, just simply click outside in the grayer area to deselect everything. And then while the group is selected, click select and that's going to show you what is the actual um, assignment selection for uh, this group. So make sure you double check your work. Let's go back into the object mode. So we can do that by simply uh, using this drop down and go to the object mode. So that's one way. Or uh, again, you just can uh, click the uh, tab key on your keyboard and that's gonna automatically uh, take you to the object mode. Now, we need to tell Blender uh, that we uh, have a group selection and uh, we want that to drive the particles, right? So let's go into our uh, particle system again and let's go ahead and scroll down to something called uh, vertex groups. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down uh, and I can see it right here. I'm gonna open that up and in the density, uh, let's go ahead and search for the group name which in my case, I didn't actually name it anything exciting. It's just called group. So let's go ahead and select that. And uh, once you select it, it looks like everything broke. Don't panic, just simply drag this around a little bit and you should see uh, all of these particles kind of kick in. Now the uh, cool thing about this, and let's go ahead and go back into our normal view here. Um, so the cool thing about this is that now you can see that the um, hair or the fur is being absent from the feet and the hands, right? Which is really cool. Now there's a uh, problem and the problem is I have the fur um, that disappeared from the front. So why is that? You can see it in the back, but it's missing from the front. So um, it's usually, it's using the uh, group selection to, um, you know, to uh, mask out the uh, fur or the hair. So my group selection that I just created uh, clearly has an issue, right? And I'm gonna leave this in here uh, just so you, if you ever experience something similar, uh, you can adjust it at any time. So what you could do is you can just go back into this section here. Remember, um, if we select our mesh and press tab on our keyboard, right? It's gonna take us to the edit mode. And then in here, if we say select, um, you can see that when I was in the uh, orthographic view and I dragged my selection, um, I actually didn't grab the front faces. So let me actually redo this and uh, I'm gonna leave this in here as a mistake so you can uh, follow along and maybe learn something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my um, orthographic view to change my selection. Um, I'm still gonna assign it to the same group, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna click and uh, this time when I drag a selection to make sure that I get the front and the back faces of my mesh, I need to turn on this little button right here called tog toggle x-ray. Now when I click on that um, and do the selection uh, try one more time, right? Let me do the same thing. I'm gonna grab uh, the head and just ignore kind of the feet and the hands. So something like that is perfect, right? And now if I do a uh, middle mouse uh, button, I can see that the selection includes both the front and the back, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm gonna say assign uh, to the group again and let's go ahead and press tab. And now you can see that the hair uh, is going to show up in the front as well, right? And one of the things we can do because we already applied the, uh, the fur and we already applied the uh, physics and the collision, uh, we could actually bake this. So how do we bake this to make it nice and fast for our preview uh, in our viewport? Uh, to do that, we can do uh, go into particles and in here you have something called cache um, if you find your cache and scroll down here, you'll see it says bake. Let's go ahead and click on that. 
So Blender is going to quickly bake all the keyframes. Um, and now if we jump out of the X-ray mode and press play, you should see your uh, fur bouncing around and colliding. And it should be relatively fast because now it's not using uh, real-time dynamics. It's actually using uh, baked uh, data. All right, so that's uh, pretty awesome. Next, let's go ahead and uh, see um, how can we render this out, right? If we render this out, we need a couple things, right? We obviously need the ground and some lighting. Right now, if you preview and see what this looks like as is, it's not gonna look very good. But if you do wanna preview it, uh, do this. Click on this little um, camera and that should give you a box to show you what the camera um, looks like right through the, your image through the camera and then what you want to do is you want to click on this little lock to lock it in into place and now uh, you can use your um, mouse to scroll to zoom in and then shift middle mouse to pan and then of course uh, middle mouse click to uh, move it around so get into position uh, to where you like it in your camera and uh, that's going to be our uh, rendering shot right now, how do we preview that? We can just go to render and let's do a render image. And again, there's no lights, there's nothing here. It's just um, uh, just the mesh and, and the fur. And, but you could see uh, a few things, right? You could see um, that the fur is actually not on the feet or the hands and you can see it bouncing, uh, bouncing around, right? We can go to a different frame. Maybe let's do something like this. Maybe let's, let's do this and let's do a render image, right? So again, the hands are good, the feet are good, and he looks crazy. All right, awesome. Now let's make this beautiful. Right now it's super ugly. How do we make it cool? I'm gonna jump out of the camera view and uh, let's just continue. Now, how do we uh, add a plane or the floor uh, to here, right? We can always go to add and under mesh you have something called plane so let's use that so i'm going to click on that and uh, you can see that uh, it just dropped in the middle if i press s i can uh, let me press s again if i uh, start dragging it i can decide what size i want it so i'm going to make it kind of large and i'm going to left click to uh, commit let me actually drag this down so now if i zoom out i can see what that looks like now he's standing on some sort of uh, floor now, he doesn't have any background in the back. How do we uh, extend this edge up and make him, uh, you know, feel like he's uh, in front of some kind of a background? Now, we can actually also make this uh, maybe a little bit wider as well. So, to make any kind of uh, changes to the mesh, you must press the uh, tab key. That's going to automatically take you into the edit mode for that mesh. And how do we select this edge right here, right? Um, you can go into uh, select mode. So let's click on select edge mode and let's just simply click on it. You can see it gets kind of selected. Now, if I press E, I could start extruding this up, right? So I want to create something like this and we can angle it or you can press Z and that's going to keep give you a perfect 90 degree uh, straight up extrude. So I'm just going to do perfect straight up and let's go ahead and uh, click to kind of bake it in or commit to it, right? So now we have this kind of a 90 degree uh, floor and the wall, right? Uh, it would probably be cool if we beveled this edge right here to make it a little bit smoother. How do we do that? All right, let's just click on this uh, bevel button and now we have this yellow uh, thingy sticking out. If we drag it, we can see uh, that's gonna give us a bevel. And now how do we add more uh, faces in here, right? So to do this, we can add more segments by just simply doing this. And let me just do something like 10. I think that's uh, that works. All right, so once we are happy with it, uh, let's say we uh, designed this amazing uh, set for ourselves. Let's just uh, press tab to get out of the edit mode. And now we are left with uh, just this plane. Now this currently looks kind of jaggedy. If I right click on it, I can do shade smooth. And that's going to smooth it out, right? So now it's a little more, uh, a little more appealing. All right, so next let's go ahead and add some lights. How do we do that? Uh, let's go to add and let's jump in some lights and let's just do an area light. So I'm gonna drop that in. And what I could do next is I can press G on my keyboard to move it up and I can hold down Z to make sure that I'm moving it up, up and down, right? 
Uh, so I'm gonna move it up, you know, kind of like the light uh, in the real environment, right? It's gonna be like up here. Now, the next thing I wanna do is probably change the intensity of this light. So let's jump into the light section and let's change the power to something like, uh, let's just change it to like 350, right? So it's a little more powerful. We can also change the size. Let's just change it to like three. So it's a bit larger. Uh, to make it better, let's also go into uh, EV uh, render engine uh, section right here. And let's turn on a few things like ambient occlusion. And uh, let's do uh, screen space reflections. We can turn that on. We can also do depth of field and bloom and uh, motion blur. Let's go ahead and definitely turn on motion blur, right? We want that. Um, if we, if we want to see how this light actually looks, we can go into the uh, render view. So let's go into a viewport uh, shading. And now uh, we can see how the light is affecting our character and we can see some shadows, which is really cool. Uh, it is going to be a little bit slower, right? But that's going to be uh, kind of important for us to figure out how our lighting is looking. If you wanted to rotate your light while it's selected, right? You can just always go to rotation and just simply rotate it and you can see how that's going to change, uh, you know, the shadow on the ground, right? If I wanna move it around, again, press G to move it around. It's gonna start moving, hold down uh, Z to move it up and down or hold down the X if you wanna move it left and right. So that's um, how you can, can control your axes. Once you're done, just left click and it's gonna kind of park itself uh, wherever you left it. In my case, I don't want it there. So I'm gonna press G, X, slide it back uh, to the middle. And I'm just doing this to get a little practice. Now let's add some uh, sky, uh, you know, like a sky dome, right? So to do that, let's go ahead and go into a world, click on color. Let's find something called sky texture. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see how everything got much, much brighter. Now this is way too bright, right? Let's change the strength from one to maybe 0 0.3, press enter and now it's a little bit better. Uh, you can leave it on 0.3, you can try 0.25 maybe. Maybe that's even better. And now we have something that looks like this. So let's do a quick preview and see what that looks like. Again, I'm gonna click on my camera and this is my current shot. So I'm gonna go to uh, render, render image. Let's do a quick sneak peek and see what that looks like. All right, so we can decide if we like it all white or if we wanna uh, maybe change the fur to some other color. Just for fun, let's just go ahead and change it, right? How do we do that? And uh, at this point, uh, let's go ahead and make sure you save your scene. All right, so before we change the color of the fur, let's select our background. And you know what? Let's jump out of the, uh, the uh, camera view, right? Uh, I'm gonna select my uh, background and you can decide if you want to keep it white or uh, how do you assign color to it, right? Uh, let's go into the material material section of this um, object. And in here right now, you currently see it's blank. I'm going to say new. And now I have something called uh, base color. All right, so uh, you can decide if you want it light or dark. If I click on dark, I can, of course, maybe make it black. And uh, that's going to, you know, pop the color, uh, pop our uh, character out a little more. So you can decide if you want to do that, or you can even do a uh, color ramp, right? You can do a gradient, or you can bring uh, an image, you can do that. Uh, but in this case, let's just keep it something dark, that's fine. And uh, the roughness uh, currently set to 0.5 by default. Let's go ahead and bring it uh, down or up, I guess, so it doesn't look so reflective, so it feels a little more like uh, a material versus like a stage, right? Like this is, would be like a some kind of a dance stage. Um, I don't really want that. I want to have, it's up to you, but I want to do something uh, in this this uh, arena, like 0.8, I think is pretty good. And right away, uh, if you want to see the difference, let's go back into the camera uh, view and you can see how the character stands out a lot better, right? Uh, let's jump out and uh, let's just decide if we like everything we have. And if you wanted to, we can press on our light let's grab our uh, move tool and you can of course press g or you can just use the transform tool like we do in maya you can move it around you can control the position of your uh, uh, shadow right and you can see how by move me uh, changing the light and moving it its position it's going to affect the back of the character uh, in different ways right if i wanted to rotate it maybe point it towards the character on the angle um, I could do that. 
if we wanted to do more of a rim light, we can really pump this up a lot, right? We could do like 700. And you can see now there's like a little rim light. If I go back into the camera view, you can see that how um, the top of the character is being affected, right? If I do a quick render, you can see the rim light uh, hitting the character really nicely. Um, another thing we could do is maybe we want to add another light in front, right? So I could always select this light and I could do uh, Shift D to create a second light. And if you look in the um, outliner or on the side, uh, I'm not really sure what it's called in Blender. <laughs> in Maya, it's an outliner. But if you look in the outliner, uh, you can see there's a second light created there, right? So now uh, if I uh, move it around, right? As soon as I press Shift D, it's kind of automatically starts to move around, right? Um, if I press, uh, let's see, let's press Z. That's going to move it up and down. We already know that. We can press uh, X and that's going to move it side to side or we can press Y and that's going to move it um, in front. So in this case, I want it in front. I'm going to left click to kind of position it uh, there. And now let's just rotate it and give our character uh, just maybe better lighting, right? I'm just kind of point this uh, to the character and see what that looks like. And maybe 700 is a little bit too much. I'm gonna go back to like 300. And uh, now you can see that I have a rim light. He's the, his front is well um, lit and he's in the kind of a sky dome uh, sky environment as well. Uh, this part here still feels a little too light to me. I'm gonna uh, select this uh, stage and uh, let me change the roughness even more. I'm gonna turn it all the way to one if I wanted to make this even darker, of course I can add some metal to it and that's gonna really uh, make a big difference, right? So you know what, I kind of do want it darker. I'm gonna go with like 0.5. So roughness one, metallic uh, 0.5 and I'm actually liking this personally. All right, so how do we change the color of the character? If I select uh, my character, you can see there's no uh, material. If I say new material, uh, that's being added and now of course I can change the color uh, to whatever we like. So maybe in this case, it could be like a light blue just as a test. And uh, that's kind of fun. We can change the roughness. I don't really want it to be too reflective. So maybe 0.6 is pretty good. Uh, if you wanted to see what that actually looks like, let's do a quick render. All right, so that looks pretty cool, right? Um, what if you wanted to add a uh, colorful uh, feathers or fur instead of just having a solid color? How would you do that? Uh, so you could do that with using uh, a few cool tricks. One of them being if you select your character. So instead of going on the right here and going into the material section, we'd cook, we could click on something called shading. And shading is going to tell uh, take us into this whole uh, separate kind of a node view. And now what we could do if we zoom out, um, we can hold down the shift mi middle mouse button to pan, uh, scroll to scroll around, right? We could do that. So let's add some noise to this. I'm going to do shift A and in here, let's just type in noise. Let's click on noise texture. And now we have this window. I'm going to left click to kind of park it in place. If we take this color and plug it into the base color, we could, uh, let's zoom in and we could see there's kind of uh, these uh, patches of color, almost like a random rainbow kind of deal. And, uh, you know, that's pretty cool, but it's still hard to see, right? How do we make it more intense? Well, we can add a saturation node. So I'm going to do shift A and let's type in hue and we have hue saturation. Let's add that. So now we have this node. I'm going to left click to park it and you can see it automatically kind of um, got, you know, plugged in. Now to pump the saturation, let's go into the saturation section and let's do something like three, press enter. And now you can really see the crazy colors. And that's interesting. This one actually almost looks like a heart. Another thing we can do is we can go into our uh, hair section, find something that's called hair shape and hair shape will actually affect the way this color um, is being integrated or uh, being used in, with the character. So right now you can see you have something called diameter uh, root and uh, tip, right? So for the tip, we can do something like maybe one and for the root, let's just make it kind of uh, thicker. Maybe we'll do three, press enter. And now um, all of this is not being seen in this view, but if you go into the viewport shading, 
uh, you can you should be able to see the difference there and now if we do a quick preview instead of having the character kind of uh, having a, a plain you know blue or a solid color you have this craziness of uh, color soup which is kind of cool let's say you don't love the fact that these uh, feet also possess kind of the same uh, color as the fur or these feathers or whatever that is um, how would you assign multiple materials to the same uh, mesh or the same object uh, in Blender? How do you do that? So what you could do, uh, let's jump back into kind of this shading mode, or you know what, this is fine. Uh, let's go into this, uh, what is this one called? Viewport shading. So I'm gonna click on this, and uh, now if I go into the material section of this object, um, I could see that right now I have one material in here, it's called Material 2. And the material two is going to be all of this, right? All of this uh, cool stuff that we added. Um, so we have um, the nodes kind of driving all this noise uh, and hue and all of that. But I don't want the feet to do that, right? So what do I do now? So what I want to do is I want to create a new material. I'm going to assign a second material to the same object. So I'm going to say plus and I'm going to say new. And now you can see I have this white one and I have the original, uh, the one that we just tweaked or created, right? With our uh, shading network. So let's do this. Let's click on the second one and uh, it's up to you, but I'm just gonna make my feet and hands kind of maybe just dark black and we can just make sure it's not too shiny. Uh, we can add a little metallic if we wanted to to it. Um, up to you, right, preference wise. But uh, now how do I actually assign this black material to my feet and hands, right? Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure your object is selected. Press tab key to go into the edit mode, or you can of course um, just go in here and do edit mode. So you could do it that way. And we are still in the shading uh, category. Let's go into our layout and let's jump out of the camera and now we are in edit mode, right? So now we just wanna assign this black material to the portion of the model that is outside of this uh, selection, right? How do we invert our selection while being in edit mode? So to do that, what we can do is we can press Control I, and that's going to flip our selection and just uh, select the hands and the feet. And now uh, what you wanna do is you wanna select the second material and let's just assign it um, by pressing this button here. Okay, so now if we jump back out into, uh, or jump out of the edit mode by pressing the tap key, you can see that your feet and your hands are gonna be a different color, which you can, uh, of course, control, right? But uh, let's go back into the camera view. But the uh, fur is gonna be uh, yet a different color. And if we wanted to have a, a nice reference for that, let's just do a quick render image and see. I think that looks a little bit better because then your attention is just on the actual uh, fur or the feathers and you're not really looking at the actual uh, at the shape of the uh, of the character. All right, so before you render this out, make sure you like the lighting. So in my case, it feels still a little bit too dark. I actually would like to go into my lights. Let me jump out of the camera mode. And uh, how do I make this just a little bit brighter, right? Let's select this light here, and it's currently set to 300, but I don't know why it feels a little bit too dark still. Now, another thing I could do if I wanted to, I could change this area light to a different light. So maybe instead of uh, an area light, maybe I want to do a spotlight. So I can switch it to spotlight. I can also do a point light, or I can do sun. If I did sun, uh, I definitely want to turn this down. I'm going to switch to mine to like four, and I'm going to turn the shadow off. I don't really want this back shadow on the wall. Uh, but now uh, you can see the difference between the sun, this being the sun, and the area light, right? You can see the huge difference. And let's look at the difference, right? So this is going to be, if I switch it to area and do a render image, I can see what that looks like. And then if I switch it to the sun and do another one. All right, so I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm happy with this. Uh, so what would be the next step? How do we render this out? How do you render out? Uh, animation in uh, Blender. So again, make sure you save your work first. And then let's go into uh, the output. Let's decide where you want to save your uh, animation. I'm gonna choose a 
um, I'll just choose my desktop and say uh, accept, that's fine. For the file format, let's change this to um, MPEG video, so I'm going to do that. For encoding, let's change the container to MPEG4. So now to preview the actual animation, uh, all we need to do is um, let's just go to render and uh, we can do a uh, render animation. So instead of doing render image, I'm going to do render animation. And that will uh, take a little bit, right? I have 100 frames to render, so let me go ahead and do that. All right, so here's the uh, rendered uh, version of that. Let me loop this and press play. You can see what that looks like. Um, I think it looks really cool. The only thing that I would definitely add is some kind of a camera movement, right? Um, I think right now it feels uh, a little too stagnant. Um, how do we do that? What if you wanted to add a little camera movement to this? So what you could do is you could select the camera, right? And uh, let's go ahead and go into camera mode. So this is what we are looking through. If we wanted to, let's go into the shading mode so it's a little bit faster. And uh, in here, of course, you can create um, animations uh, for, for the camera, right? Right now, you can see clearly there's nothing in here. How do we set a keyframe um, in, um, in Blender for, uh, for animations, right? So, so let's go to frame uh, one, uh, holding down the shift, uh, hold down the shift key and then middle mouse button to kind of move it around. So you can move it, press I, and that's gonna uh, insert a key. Let's go to like frame uh, 15, hold down the shift key, middle mouse button, move it over a little bit, uh, press I. And I'm gonna say all channels. I can also select a key. I can copy it. I can go to the end, right click, and I could say paste, and that's going to paste the same key. So now if I go between uh, 105, or I guess the end of the animation and the beginning, you can see the camera is gonna be set in the same position. So now if I press play, you can see that the camera is moving around a little bit, and maybe uh, that's gonna be you know a little more uh, fun for us. All right, so let's check this out. And uh, now we have the moving camera, and I think that looks uh, a lot better. So that would be uh, a cool uh, little way you can uh, play around and add some uh, awesome furs and hairs to your uh, characters. There's obviously, uh, I am seeing some issues that could make it better, but um, this is a, you know, a quick little workout, a little fun exercise for us in uh, Blender. Maybe if we make it smaller, we won't see our imperfections as much. But anyways, thanks so much for uh, joining me today. I will see you guys in our next video.